Get a better broadcast, podcast and voice over voice. How fast can you say that? It's almost like a tongue twister in itself, isn't it? Hello, I'm Peter Stewart. Tweeter Stewart on Twitter. T-W-E-T-E-R-S-T-E-W-A-R-T. Uh, thank you for your uh, f- for your messages. Uh, I got one actually recently and I'm just uh, scrolling down to see who it was from. Someone who I was really, really pleased to uh, to hear from. So I really appreciate uh, the thanks from Farida Rahman, who uh, gave me a message. I love the fact that each episode is bite-sized and named with interesting yet accurate descriptions. Um, so, uh, Farida, thank you so much indeed for your message. Really appreciate it. Welcome to today's episode, Farida, and everybody else as well. And we're in the moment of talking about different aspects of mic fright, stage fright, studio anxiety. I mean, it would be a bit of a strange um, career to be in if, if you were always put off by being in a studio and having a microphone and talking in public or having your voice recorded or hearing your voice in your headphones. But it may be something that's developed over years or as I've said before maybe you see it in somebody else so also what we're trying to do here is to give you some ideas not just to help you you but to help other people as well so what is going on with extreme nervousness I mean it's a really unpleasant experience isn't it I mean we've probably all had it from standing up to uh, read something in the school assembly or to uh, do a vote of thanks at a uh, at, at, at a at a at a meeting or something like that, maybe you've had to do a speech at a wedding, uh, or, or or even stand up in front of lots of people you do know or lots of people you don't know, and say a few words or maybe maybe even give a whole presentation. Physical and mental suffering, almost, isn't it? Th- that if if you're a broadcaster, may be in public, and, and recorded and played back, not just played back in your mind but played back on social media for years to come. Yes, it's something else to deal with now, isn't it? Glossophobia is the fear of public speaking or speaking to a group of people. Uh, From the Greek glosso for tongue and language and and, and phobia, Well, we know the derivation of that to do with fear. Richard O. Smith wrote a book in 2015 called The Man With His Head in the Clouds. And in it, he wrote, Year after year in the UK, glossophobia claims the top spot as Britain's number one phobia, repeatedly knocking fear of death down into second position. At a funeral, the average Briton would rather be in the casket than deliver the eulogy. Which is a great turn of phrase, isn't it, from Richard there? OK, so what situations might cause Mike Fright? Our catch-all term that we're using as a bit of shorthand here. I mean, nerves are usually quite normal. Even so, there are some situations that may cause anything from butterflies to freezing. A radio or TV presenter, used to studio work, being asked to present on the road or on stage in front of real people. That is out of your comfort zone, so that may cause a little bit of mic frights. Maybe the mic live, red light coming on. I mean, sometimes it's called, perhaps understandably, the dread light rather than the red light. Uh, the, the, the accompanying sweating armpits and shallow breaths. Even working in a different studio with a different format or with breaking news, perhaps with a new producer or a co-host, all of these can cause usually languishing Lepidoptera to awaken. Lepidoptera? Butterflies, the butterflies in your stomach that are usually still and silent can rise and flutter around. Also, what about the audience, its size? I mean, 12 people is perhaps less daunting than 200. But but also the audience's importance. You know, are you, are you speaking to a group of, of MDs at the office, people above you? Or are you talking to a group of 10-year-olds, which may be something different? Maybe people you know, how familiar we are with the members. Before you know it, there you are face-to-face with paying clients from major corporations who are looking to you through the glass into the studio where you're sitting. They're looking to you to bring their message to the masses. It could also be down to the difficulty of the subject or your familiarity or not with the script and we've spoken about that before haven't we 
a feeling a need to impress. Perhaps it's an audition or your first day. So all sorts of things can affect how you feel in the moment in a studio with a mic in your hands. OK, tomorrow, underlying reasons for Mike Fright as Get A Better Broadcast podcast and Voice Over Voice continues. From London, I'm Peter Stewart. Do, 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 do,